Welcome to Faith and Wellness. And together we continue with the consecration to St. Joseph, the wonders of a spiritual father. Today we're doing day 11, spouse of the mother of God, pray for us. Come Holy Spirit, guide us, enlighten us, and give us the wisdom to continue with an open heart and mind to learn more about the spouse of the mother of God who keeps on interceding for us in heaven. How hard he, St. Joseph, must have prayed to come to know a never-increasing love toward his immaculate wife. This is what Blessed Gabriel Allegra said. Um, today, we will be focusing on how St. Joseph is the model husband and father, how St. Joseph is a model for all men, and we will also um, be talking about how St. Joseph was as the husband of Mary. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, subscribe and share because we want more people to be consecrated to St. Joseph so that they can have a true role model of how a father is supposed to be for if you have sons so that your sons can follow and imitate St. Joseph and also if you have daughters so that your daughters can be wise to ask God for a St. Joseph in their lives so they can marry a God-loving man that will be a good father for their kids and for us that are already married and have our husbands so that we can learn all the virtues and imitate the love that St. Joseph had for Mary. Okay, so here we go. There has never been a man more in love with a woman than St. Joseph was in love with Mary. What dignity and holiness were required of St. Joseph to be the husband of Mary in her feminine heart? Mary knew that she was secure in the manhood of St. Joseph. He was her knight and warrior. Every wife desires such a husband, a gentleman, a protector, and a good father. That's why we need to share this consecration with our children, especially in, if they're in college and even younger, so that way they can have a true love for St. Joseph. Women deserve men who are strong and protective, yet gentle, loving, and trustworthy. Every woman wants to find security in the arms of a man who is willing to lay down his life for her. The church and the world need men like St. Joseph. He is the model husband. St. Joseph was the spouse of Mary. In the same way, each father sees himself entrusted with the mystery of womanhood through his own wife. Dear fathers, like St. Joseph, respect and love your spouse. And by your love and your wife's presence, lead your children to God. This is what Pope Benedict XVI said. Every Catholic heart wants shepherds like St. Joseph as well, priests and bishops, spiritual fathers, who are gentlemen, chivalrous warriors, protectors, and defenders. Catholics ex expect their priests and bishops to be prayerful, trustworthy, gentle, compassionate, and virtuous. The pride of Christ, the church, deserves to have leaders who are willing to fight off the wolves. For love of the flock, slay spiritual dragons and preach the truth with passion. Christian charity and zeal. St. Joseph is the model of all fatherhood without looking to the model of St. Joseph. No husband, father, or priest will ever fully understand what it means to be a sacrificial man, a loving husband and father, and truly masculine saint. 
Saint Joseph is the model husband and father. The vocation of all men is to be at the service of those entrusted to their love and care. Many men have forgotten this day, but Saint Joseph will help them remember. He will help them be holy, chivalrous again. All men discover in Saint Joseph a model of strength, fidelity, heroism, and virtue. If men, husbands, fathers, priests, and bishops follow the example of Saint Joseph, families will be loving and secure, husbands will be holy, priests will be dragon slayers, and bishops will again be shepherds of souls and pillars of truth. Saint Joseph is a model for all men. Real men are true gentlemen at the service of others. Real men love, real men protect women and children against any and all threats. Real men are willing to die for their wives and children. Holy priests and bishops are willing to suffer and die for the souls entrusted to their care. Priests and bishops of this caliber are not afraid of ridicule, slander, poverty, or imprisonment. Men like St. Joseph are willing to fight for what they love, what is good, true, and beautiful. May the church and families once again be filled with such men. To you, O blessed Joseph, we come in our trials, and having asked the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently ask your patronage. Your patronage. Also, this is what Pope Leo the Thirteen said, Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Now, we're going to be learning about Mary's husband. Okay. Young husband of Mary. I don't agree with the traditional picture of St. Joseph as an old man, even though he may have been prompted by a desire to emphasize the perpetual virginity of Mary. I see him as a strong young man, perhaps a few years older than Our Lady, but in the, in the prime of his life and work. This is what Saint Jose Maria Escriba said. Have you ever read such a statement from a saint about the age of Saint Joseph? Saint, jo saint Jose Maria has good reason for asserting that Saint Joseph was a young man when he married Our Lady and Saint, jo saint Jose Maria is not the only one who thinks this way. The Catholic Church has no formal official teaching on the age of St. Joseph. You are free to believe that St. Joseph was an old man when he espoused Mary if you want to. You are also free to believe that he was a young man. Personally, I find it very hard to believe that St. Joseph was an old man. The, the physical demands of his mission make the probability of him being an old man practically zero. If you consider the titles that the church gives St. Joseph in this, in his litany, Guardian of the Redeemer, Chaste Guardian of the Virgin, Guardian of the Virgins, Guardian of Virgins, Model of Workmen, Terror of Demons, etc., etc., they lean in the direction that St. Joseph was young and strong. These titles are not descriptions of an elderly man. Is an old man capable of guarding virgins? Can an elderly man serve as a model of laborers? It takes strength to be a guardian. It takes health to be a worker. Can an old man do these things? As Mother Angelica said, all men don't walk to Egypt. Neither do all men guard anything whose safe keeping require mobility and strength. None of of this implies any moral fault in elderly men, of course. The world is filled with countless holy old men who are virtuous, wise, and saintly. Yet, 
all men are not known for their physical capacities to do the kinds of things that St. Joseph was required to do for the Holy Family. Then, why has the vast majority of art over the centuries depicted St. Joseph as an old man? The most articulate answer to this question is provided by Venerable Fulton J. Sheen. He writes, Was he, St. Joseph, old or young? Most of the statues and pictures we see of St. Joseph today represent him as an old man with a gray beard, one who took Mary and her vow under his protection, with somehow somewhat the same detachment as a doctor would pick up a baby girl in a nursery. We have, of course, no historical evidence whatsoever concerning the age of Joseph. Some ap apocryphal accounts picture him as an old man. Fathers of the church after the fourth century followed this legend rather ri rigidly. But when one searches for the reason why Christians are should have pictured Joseph as aged, we discover that it was in order better to safeguard the virginity of Mary. Somehow the assumption had crept in the sense senility was a better protector of virginity than adolescence. Art thus unconscientiously made Joseph a spouse chaste and pure by age rather than by virtue. But this is like assuming that the best way to show that a man would never steal is to picture him without hands. But the more, but more than that, to make Joseph our soul portrays for us a man who had little vital energy left, rather than one who, having it, kept it in chains for God's sake and for his holy purposes. To make Joseph appear pure only because his flesh had aged is like glorifying a mountain stream that has dried. The church will not ordain a man to his priesthood who has not his vital powers. She wants men who have something to tame rather than those who are tame because they have no energy to be wild. It should be no different with God. Furthermore, it is reasonably reasonable to believe that our Lord would prefer for a foster father someone who had made a sacrifice rather than someone who was forced to it. There is the added historical fact that the Jews frown on a on a disproportionate marriage between the Shakespeare called Crab Age and youth. The Talmud admits a disproportionate marriage only for widows or widowers. Finally, it seems hardly possible that God would have attached a young mother, probably about 16 or 17 years of age, to an old man if he did not disdain to give his mother to a young man, John, at the age, at the foot of the cross, then why should we have given her an old man at the crib? A woman's love always determines the way a man loves. She is the silent educator of his powers. Give very little credit to the Blessed Mother if she had taken her vow of virginity after having been an old maid for 50 years. So neither could we give much credit to a Joseph who became her spouse because he was advancing years. Young girls in those days, like Mary, took vows to love God uniquely, and so did young men in whom Joseph was once so preeminent as to be called the just. Instead then of being dried fruit to be served on the table of the king, 
He was rather a blossom filled with promise and power. He was not in the evening of life, but in its morning, bubbling over with energy, strength, and controlled passion. Mary and Joseph brought to their spouse, spousals not only their vows of virginity, but also two hearts with greater torrents of love than had ever before coursed through human breast. How much more beautiful Mary and Joseph become when we see in their life what might be called the first divine romance. No human heart is moved by the love of the all for the young. But who is not moved by the love of the young for the young? In both Mary and Joseph, there were youth, beauty, and promise. God loves cascading characters and billowing waterfalls, but he loves them better, not when they overflow and drown his flowers, but when they are harnessed and brittle to light a city and to slake the thirst of a child. In Joseph and Mary, we do not find one controlled waterfall and one dried up lake, but rather two youths who before they knew the beauty of the one and the handsome strength of the other, willed us to surrender these things for Jesus, leaning over the manger crib of the infant Jesus, then or not age and youth, but youth and youth. The consecration of beauty in a maid and the surrender of a strong comeliness in a comeliness in a man. Wow, Fulton Sheen is brilliant. As far as I know, no other person in the entire history of the church has articulated a more convincing argument for a young Saint Joseph than Fulton Sheen, as he so clearly states. Theology and art only depict St. Joseph as an old man in order to protect the virginity of Mary. Now, to be fair, the decision to depict St. Joseph as an old man, whether in preaching, writing, or art, did work to safeguard the virginity and purity. As an extreme example of this, an ancient Coptic text on the life of St. Joseph presents him as being 91 years of age when he exposed Mary. Wow. However, all historians and theologians, theologians acknowledge that the source for presenting St. Joseph as an old man come from apocryphal, that is, non-canonical documents, relying on apocryphal writings to offer an age for St. Joseph led to presentation of him as an old man, diminishing his virtue importance and greatness in the minds of Christians. No wonder so few people have paid attention to St. Joseph over the centuries. How drastic and effective the approach of St. Joseph have. To this day, St. Joseph is rarely included in seminary classes on Christology, Mariology, Soterology, Ecclesiology, the man universally acclaimed as the most loving, just, chaste, prudent, courageous, obedient, and faithful man to ever live doesn't even get mentioned in classes on the theological or moral virtues. This needs to change. Thank God for the wisdom and the insight of people such as Jose Maria Escriba, Mother Angelica, and Venerable Fulton Sheen. The church needs to represent to represent to her children an image of St. Joseph that depicts him as a strong, masculine, and young. The constant presentation of him as an old man has severely warped our understanding of the greatest saint besides Mary to walk this earth. It's time to reclaim St. Joseph. Now, don't take this the wrong way. The Lord loves elderly men. God loves a man. Years of hard work, service, selfless, dedication, and sacrificial love. Calm, just, and peaceful. Societies rest 
on the foundations established by all men. Yet those men built the foundations and pillars of civilization when they were young, not when they were old. Likewise, the formative years of Jesus Christ were lovingly ruled by a strong young father named Joseph. It was this hardworking, caring, virtuous father who laid the foundations for the human growth and development of Jesus Christ. While there is no doubt that an old man is just as capable of being holy as any young man, it takes a strong young father to teach a boy how to swing an ox, work with wood, carry lumber, walk great distances, and earn a living by the sweat of his brow. If earthly princes consider it a matter of such or so much importance, to select carefully a tutor fit for their children. Think of that the eternal God would not, in his almighty power and wisdom, choose from out of his creation the most perfect man living in St. Joseph to be the guardian of his divine and most glorious son, the Prince of Heaven and Earth. This is what St. Francis de Sales says, said. Blessed William Joseph Chaminade echoes a similar idea but looks at St. Joseph's manhood from the perspective of his marriage to Our Lady, he writes, If God had charged you with the honorable task of choosing from among the kings a husband for a, the Blessed Virgin, would you not have given her the greatest mind in the world? And if he had ordered you to pick one of the saints, would you not have given her the greatest saint who ever trod the earth? Now, do you think that the Holy Spirit, who is the author of his divine of this divine marriage, is less concerned than you or to provide her with a husband suited to her merits? This is what blessed William Joseph Chaminade said. Make a lot of sense, right? Sure it does. Saint Joseph was the loving husband of Mary, not a retired husband incapable of manual labor and long journeys on foot. Saint Joseph was known by everyone in Nazareth as the father of Jesus, not the grandfather of Jesus. As the father of Jesus, Saint Joseph was a zealous defender and a strong protector of his beloved son. Saint Joseph sacrificed everything, including the pleasures of conjugal love, to fulfill his mission as guardian of the virgin and guardian of the Redeemer. Incidentally, when, when popes and saints use the word guardian in reference to St. Joseph, they are using it in more than just the legal sense. They use it in the protective, fatherly, and manly sense. A guardian is someone who is strong not only in mind and heart, but also physically. St. John Henry Newman spoke of the guardianship of St. Joseph in the following way. He, St. Joseph, was the cherub placed to guard the new terrestrial paradise from the intrusion of every foe. A man charged with, guardian, with guarding a territory from the intrusion of every foe needs to be a physically powerful man, not an elderly man requiring a cane. Like a powerful cherub dedicated to the protection and service of the Queen of Angels, St. Joseph was given the task of guarding the temple of Mary's body, and in particular her virginity. Mary's guardian had to be young and strong in order to successfully fulfill his mission. An elderly man would probably, probably not have the strength to guard a young wife. Neither would an elderly man be likely to have the stamina needed to raise an infant son. St. Joseph's manhood was a protective shield, a protective clock for the Blessed Virgin. No man or beast could do any harm to the Virgin Mary because St. Joseph stood attentive and ready to defend her, even to the point of death. The cloud that in the old law overshadows the tabernacle is a figure of St. Joseph's marriage with the Blessed Virgin. The cloud covered the tabernacle of the covenant and the glory of the Lord filled it. 
and this is in Exodus 40, chapter 40, verse 32. St. Joseph's marriage is a sacred veil which covers the mystery of the Incarnation. Everyone sees that Mary is a mother, but only Joseph knows that she is a virgin. Blessed William Joseph Chimene said. As a young husband and father, St. Joseph modeled manhood for his son, Jesus. Everybody should be able to look to his father to understand what it means to be a man. If St. Joseph had been an elderly man, would Jesus have observed in his father any physical strength or true love, but into but or true love put into practice through heroic chastity? hard work, and bodily gestures of piety. Kneeling, for example, if St. Joseph were two or three times the age of his wife, what would Jesus have observed in his father? Afternoon naps and forgetfulness, again, there is nothing wrong with old age. Growing old is part of human life. St. Joseph himself aged as, a, as life went on, as happens to all men, but would God, Father, entrust the upbringing and education of his son, the Lion of Judah and the King of Kings, to an elderly and fragile man? Probably not. But the church and the world can learn from a younger depiction of St. Joseph, especially in theology, preaching, literature, and art, is that young men can be chaste, heroic, and holy. Indeed, the church has countless examples of young men who kept themselves chaste and pure for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, and St. Joseph was the greatest of them all. St. Jose Maria Escriba tells us, you don't have to wait to be old or lifeless to practice the virtue of chastity. Purity comes from love, and the strength and gaiety of youth or no Gaiety, I, I don't know how to pronounce the word, sorry, of youth or no obstacles for noble love. Joseph had a young heart and young body when he married Mary. Mary. When he learned of the mystery of her divine motherhood, when he lived in her company, respecting the integrity God wished to give the world as one more sign that he had come to share the life of his creatures. Anyone who cannot understand a love like that knows very little of true love and is a complete stranger to the Christian meaning of chastity. In my opinion, St. Joseph was a young husband, tender and loving toward his wife, but always chaste, modest, and pure. Mary loved her. Mary loved her, Joseph. He's manly love for her was strong and always controlled by reason and faith. His virility, his powers, always held in restraint and service to God's will made him the most virtuous husband and father ever to walk this earth. No woman ever had a greater man than St. Joseph. God could not have given the most holy virgin to Joseph as his wife unless he had been holy and righteous. The right-minded father would ever give his most beloved daughter in marriage to a, to a man who was not moral and beyond reproach according to his rank and state in life. This is what St. Lawrence of Brindisi said. So what are you to gain from this wonder of St. Joseph? Are you required to believe that St. Joseph was young? No, you're not. But do you understand, at least based on the physical demands his mission would have inevitably placed on him, why it makes more sense that St. Joseph was young rather than old, old when he married Our Lady? Regardless of which depiction of St. Joseph you prefer, know that St. Joseph is your loving, strong, fearless, spiritual father. Thank him for all that he did out of selfless love for Jesus and your spiritual mother, Mary. 
thank him for all that he does for love of you. I thank you, Holy Patriarch Joseph, because we who are incapable of even knowing how to love Jesus and our Immaculate Mother know and rejoice that you at least love her as she deserved to be loved, the worthy and true mother of Jesus. This is what Blessed Gabriel Allegra said. Well, you decide. Was he old or not? As far as for me, I don't think he was old. That's my true opinion. I don't think he was old because an old, even if, if he was 10 years old, older than Mary he I I think he was within 10 years older than her or less because older man cannot keep up with a baby yet alone teaching him or walking from one place to another and he needed to be strong and ready to keep on protecting our Lord. Well, that's just my humble opinion. But you decide. But the most important thing is that St. Joseph is the, the father on earth of Jesus. And that we cannot dispute that. Well, tomorrow we'll continue with... Day number 12, and we are going to be talking about the ch chaste guardian of the Virgin. Pray for us. We're also, we are going to be talking to St. Joseph and how pure of heart he was, continues to be. And also, your spiritual father is a gentleman. And then we will be talking about the Feast of the Holy Spouses. So continue continue and follow along with this journey because it gets better and better as we continue and if you have not subscribed to my channel please subscribe and share because we want more more people to be consecrated to saint joseph and i shall see you tomorrow in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen <music>